The first thing is that they are extremely deep condolences to the people who lost their lives in the yet another rail accident that occurred last night this morning near Vishakapatna on the same line as the Howrah Chennai line on which the Balasur accident happened which caused nearly 300 deaths and there's a third railway accident in the last four months and this is something that is not acceptable. Whatever the government must say, may say, I mean the pure focus has been in inaugurating one day by the trains, but the basic safety on the railways, which is the lifeline for Indian people, that has been, is being neglected, is what we can say. So while conveying our deepest condolences to the bereaved families, calling for immediate uh, and adequate compensation. We think the government and the Ministry of Railways must beef up its safety concern and take all necessary measures to improve railway safety. That was the first issue. Because this happened after a central committee meeting, so it's not part of the communique. That is why the second one is regarding the bomb blasts in Kerala, in Ernakulam. Now, one person has been arrested who has uh, been rounded up as, as main suspect. And the Je Jehovah Witnesses, who are the, some consider them as Jews, some consider them as Christians. They themselves, I think many of them don't consider as either. But they have their faith and we respect them <laughs> for having that faith, whatever faith that they may have. But this is something that has, uh, I mean, really caused, uh, I mean, three people have died so far. Some are critical, are, uh, I mean, deepest condolences as well as the government calling upon the government, which is taking care of all the, providing the, medical attention to the injured. But at the same time, we have strongly condemned the manner in which the Hindutva Brigade jumped into the fray in trying to conduct a campaign of Islamophobia and vitiate the communal atmosphere, and which unfortunately saw the participation of a union cabinet minister who was very prompt and with alacrity, he tweeted, making and hurling these communal charges. And all of that has now, from the developments that have taken place since, has been shown to be completely misplaced, misdirected, and based on a certain, a certain mindset that sees everything in terms of being anti-Muslim, anti-minorities, and through the prism of sharpening communal polarization. We appeal to the people of Kerala to maintain their unparalleled and unique traditions of a social and communal harmony that is unique, in fact, in, in the rest of India, and uh, not to fall prey to any elements who seek to dis disrupt this communal amity and social harmony in the state. Thirdly, we have, uh, the Central Committee has strongly, uh, I mean, strongly expressed its shock at the Government of India abstaining on the UN General Assembly resolution, calling for a humanitarian aid and the ceasefire in the ongoing Israeli genocidal aggression against the Palestinians. It's been three weeks now, and more than 8,000 people are officially reported to have died, more than half of them being children. And this is a humanitarian crisis of an immense proportion, unknown of even in war times in recent years. I mean, this dimension of this human tragedy is such 
that this Israeli aggression must immediately be stopped. So we've said that there should be a ceasefire, which is what the global peace movements are all demanding. And we are part of that. Global protest actions going all over the world. For three weeks in a row, three weekends in a row, London, central London saw the biggest possible demonstrations in recent times of more than three lakh people the day before yesterday. And these protests are going on all over the world. So we think that pressure must be brought about on Israel to immediately declare a ceasefire, facilitate humanitarian aid, and work for the, accept and work for the solution. A two-state solution as UN mandated, with East Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Palestine, with the pre-1967 borders that the UN resolution demarcated. So this is the solution and this is the, what needs to be done. The panel committee discussed the assembly elections uh, that are forthcoming now. And in uh, Rajasthan, we decided to contest 17 seats. In uh, Madhya Pradesh, four and in Chhattisgarh, three. The seats for Telangana under, under, they are being discussed because there's still time for the Telangana elections to come in. So that is as far as the assembly elections are concerned. Now on Manipur, we have expressed very deep anguish that the situation continues to deteriorate. I mean, they continues, the death, mayhem, etc. continue and the state government and the administration is completely out of sorts in trying to handle the situation. The arms that have been looted, just about a fourth, a fourth of them have been recovered. So in this situation, this double-engine government so-called, that has now completely failed in uh, bringing back normalcy in Manipur. So we think immediately the Chief Minister of Manipur must quit. The center would have to take whatever is necessary to restore law and order and peace in Manipur, because this will also have an impact on other bordering northeastern states. And one of them is scheduled to go for elections now in Mizoram. So in that situation, immediate action must be taken by the central government. Now, we have uh, decided and then all the mass organizations, the central committee has decided and the agriculture, labor, the Kisan Sabha, the presence of farmers and the workers have jointly together, have given a call which are uh, against the deteriorating economic conditions of the people and the promises that have not been implemented by the Modi government. There's a lot of propaganda that is going on about the health of our economy. But the fact is that today, new investment proposals have declined by nearly 80%, 72.5 in the private and 79.2, I think, in the government or the other way around. Close to 80%, the investment proposals have declined. You. The unemployment, though Prime Minister goes on harping that that is the lowest unemployment rate. The same surveys which gave you the figure of a lower rate have also pointed out this is because most of the people have opted out of the employment market and have therefore been categorized as self-employed. People are just not looking for jobs because there are no jobs available. And to categorize them as self-employed, and therefore say that an unemployment rate has come out is absolutely cheating ourselves. And, uh, and this is something that is not acceptable. And prices are skyrocketing again. Today, onions were selling at, I think, above 80 rupees in Delhi. And, uh, and you know, whatever, whenever onion prices rise, what happens? I mean, literally, I mean, what will happen? So that is a, 
a separate issue. But with price rise, growing unemployment and the plummeting of India and the world hunger index, which of course the Modi government doesn't accept, it doesn't accept anything that the world, any one of the world uh, indices or, uh, or measures that the, that the whole world accepts, but we don't, or our government doesn't. So in this situation, the burdens on the people are growing and the Central Committee decided that the protest actions against this will be widespread and intensified all across the country. Now on the one nation, one election thing, former President Kovind, the committee under him, has written to us, I'm sure, to the other political parties also, to give our opinion on this by, by the 18th of January. I think they are preparing to see if it's possible to implement this for the 2024 general elections. This sort of a timing that is thing, because the terms of reference for this committee is to examine the ways for implementation of one nation, one election. It's not to say that whether it is feasible or desirable. It is for implementing this. So if that is the thing, we have taken our position and we reiterated our position that we are completely opposed to this because this is both anti-constitution of India and patently undemocratic. And we've given our reasons, we've given to them in writing, and we've uh, reiterated them in the Central Committee meeting. The Central Committee has also decided that we will champion the need to conduct a caste census with a socio-economic enumeration of these castes along with the 2021 general census that is long overdue. Now this has been something we think it's absolutely essential because what is the misconception that people normally have is that a caste enumeration or a caste census is only required to determine reservations. That is one part of it. The socio-economic status of this caste enumeration is the vital input to determine the who is eligible for your entitlements, including land. Your entitlements are, are dependent upon such a census enumeration. And therefore, this is essential. The last time this was done was in 1931. And since then, we are going by figures which are basically assumptions and not the actual reality. And since putting all the assumptions to rest, the actual reality must be ascertained. Therefore, we called for this holding of a caste survey. So the Central Committee decided to give a call all across the country to all our units. And we started it, Central Committee itself started it yesterday, when we held this uh, protest dharna against the war of genocide against Palestinians by Israel, demanding an immediate ceasefire, humanitarian aid, and a political solution of this two-state solution. So this will now, all the units of the CPM, along with the other left parties or who are willing to come and join, will organize these protest actions all across the country. Another important thing that is happening, which will affect all of us, I mean, it's uh, not only the poor or the working people, is the decision now to install what are called smart meters for electricity consumption. And this comes with prepaid arrangements. And therefore, you have, I mean, the charges of electricity rates are bound to escalate astronomically. Already, because of the invoicing issues of coal imports, which has been exposed by the Financial Times as far as the Adani enterprises are concerned. Because of that, the inflated import price of coal inflates the electricity charges of the country. That is already happening. Now on top of that, you have the smart meters being installed with prepaid arrangements. And that, that's, it's another way of the state abdicating electricity distribution. 
this distribution will power distribution will now be henceforth totally privatized and every one of us will be at the at the risk or, or the mercy of the private uh, you know suppliers of electricity and their what do you call rules or regulations on what will happen for non payment or how much of whatever such charges or fees that they may charge etc but we'll all be subjected to that so we have decided to give a call all across the country wherever they were sold to be installed to organize protest actions against them as i said earlier the party will support that kisan mazdoor uh, mahaparav the rally from the 26 to 28th of september and on the 4th of december the dalit organizations and platforms have decided to call for a parliament march which the cpm central committee decided that the party will extend support to this march by mobilizing i mean by helping them mobilize the maximum number of uh, dalits to come to the national capital to air their grievances and air their demands so these are the major issues that we discussed in the meeting